Welcome to the demonstration of the Google Apps Connector for Sugar CRM version 2.0. Uh, we're now calling it the IntelliSync Connector um, as, part of, uh, as part of the branding. Okay. Um, now, what the, uh, what the Google Apps Connector uh, allows you to do uh, is it actually provides a contextual toolbar directly within your email. Okay, um, it it will um, if the recipients on the email are recognised contacts, leads, targets, or accounts within your CRM, it'll provide links across the bottom of that. Uh, and if we want to quickly show an example, then okay, this is uh, an example in uh, one of my emails. Okay, so I've just loaded up the uh, toolbar there. <coughs> Okay, so what this is actually doing is picking up a whole range of contacts there. Okay, so let me jump back into uh, our demonstration. Okay, so obviously it allows us to archive our email communication into the CRM. So what I'll do uh, to be able to do that is I'll hit Save Email. It'll find suggested related objects within the CRM based on our configuration. Now, this, the objects that are searched as well as all of the create forms within this system are fully configurable. Okay, so we'll run through how, to, how that works in a sec. Okay, but if I wanted to archive that email against Jacqueline there, I can select her name and hit save. Now you'll notice that's really, really fast. Okay, um, so we don't want our sales reps or our account managers sitting there waiting for emails to archive. Uh, the whole platform is built on Google App Engine. It'll automatically scale and we leverage a, um, a background processing function within Google uh, that allows us to do all of the work in the background there. So if I go and refresh that page, um, uh, refresh Jacqueline's record, uh, we can actually see that that, uh, that email uh, is now archived against that record. Okay, so you can see it's very, very fast. So typically, uh, four to five seconds to archive an email, but um, the actual user experience is less than half a second, so very, very responsive. Um, by the same token, uh, we can save documents uh, against the uh, CRM. Okay, so you can see this has uh, invite.ics. Okay, we can rename those documents. Okay, um, so obviously clients don't often uh, name documents according to what we're after, so we need to um, uh, name them something more appropriate. Okay, so similar sort of thing if I uh, refresh Jacqueline's uh, record now. Okay, we'll see the uh, correctly named document has been archived against the record. Okay, I can archive against any object uh, within the CRM that has a relationship with emails, including custom objects, and that's supported out of the box without any configuration or sorry any customization uh, or additional cost. Okay, if I wanted to create a lead uh, from this particular email, I can do that. It'll inherit the um, first name, last name, and so on. Okay. Uh, as well as the body of the email, I can set the status. Okay, and if I want to create that lead, it'll go and do that. Okay, it gives me a link directly to the new lead that's been created. Okay, so I can see that within the CRM. Okay. All right. Uh, if I want to update the configuration at any point, I've uh, got the ability to force a configuration update, or well, that will actually update every 24 hours as well. Okay. All right. So what I'm actually going to do here, now I've got the default set of functionality, uh, actually I've got, uh, I don't quite have the default set of functionality, but close to that, um, leads, contacts, accounts, opportunities and targets. However, we also have a whole configuration interface. So if I click on the, uh, the configuration tools there, uh, it'll open up um, our, our uh, control panel. So that allows us to point the CRM at our public URL for our Sugar CRM system. Okay, um, we can configure uh, which uh, mailbox contains our all mail uh, in different languages. That tends to vary. Okay, but let's jump into our toolbar and search modules. Okay, so what we can actually see here is this is showing all of, all of our visible uh, navigatable modules within our CRM. 
okay, and it's asking us which of those do we want to make visible, okay. So in this case we have leads, contacts, accounts, opportunities and targets, okay, I can turn targets off if I don't want them, I can enable cases, okay, I can add fields, uh, I may want uh, a contact field, uh, I may want the account name in there as well, okay, and perhaps priority as well. Okay, and I might just add a new tab called ownership and drop in the assign to value in there. Okay, and I'm going to turn that on. Okay, now as I was saying earlier, uh, this will automatically um, uh, this will automatically refresh after 24 hours for all of our users, but if I'm testing, I may want that to happen earlier, um, or if it's an urgent uh, change that I want to make. So I'm just going to refresh that, uh, refresh those changes there now. Okay, that'll just take a few seconds. Okay, and you can see that toolbar's been updated. I now have uh, uh, a cases module there um, with all of my new fields, uh, ownership, um, so all, all of the uh, the full custom tab layout. Um, we're the only integration in the world that offers that level of flexibility, including full custom module support. Okay, um, and you can see it's also recognized automatically um, that that case should be linked to the uh, person linked to that email, okay, and the associated account. So I can go and create that case with with two clicks, okay. One to open the form and two to save. Okay, so we can see that's been created. So all very powerful from that point of view. Um, but what we want to do now is we want to jump into some of the, the premium features. Okay, so what we're going to do here, um, I'm going to go into my, uh, actually before we do that, let's talk about our search modules. So as I said earlier, uh, we'll support archiving emails against any object um, that has a relationship to emails. So we can see that the system is giving us the, uh, uh, a list of all modules that have a relationship with emails. So in Sugar CRM you can add a, a custom activities uh, uh, sub-panel against any custom module. Uh, so that this will automatically then search for those uh, against those test modules. Okay, so if we go in to one of our test modules, okay, we can see that there's, uh, that we now have, uh, uh, so each one of those modules has an activities panel, which is why we see the ability to archive emails there, okay, so it allows us to, to handle that scenario where it is a, where it is a custom module, okay. Now jumping on to our premium features, so premium features is uh, anything beyond email and uh, so email and um, uh, document or attachment integration as well as creating of records. Um, so premium features are uh, lead, contact, meeting and task integration. So we can see right there we've got CRM on online administrator uh, and that is set up as a premium uh, user. Uh, in this account, okay, so I don't have any premium licenses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add a premium license in the background, okay, uh, and we are. I, I'm then going to demonstrate the uh, the integration that we have here. Okay, so what I've done there is I have um, updated uh, the system just in the background, uh, given myself ten premium licenses. If you wanted to do that uh, yourself, you'd go to the Add New Licenses and uh, and uh, and add the license from there. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to manage our premium features and tell the system that I want to synchronise leads assigned to me and I want to use Sync to Outlook uh, for contacts and enable meeting and task synchronisation. Okay, so what that's going to do is that's then going to enable those features for those users within the CRM. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to see how that works in real time. Okay, so what I've uh, what I've actually done there is I've just uh, made a couple of fields visible that are useful for demonstrating this. So what we have here is we have uh, Nabil, uh, and I uh, let's say I have Nabil and I'd like him to appear uh, within my Google Contacts. Okay, 
Uh, so he's uh, he's actually already in there. So I might get a different contact. Okay. Um, let's create uh, a new contact called John Smith. Okay. All right. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say. Uh, that I want to synchronize that to my Google. Okay, now in our system we've renamed that to Sync to Google. Uh, in this system, uh, it's still uh, uh, it's still Sync to Outlook. Now you can configure that as needed. Now what you can actually see there is that John Smith is now immediately in my contacts. Okay, if I had a phone number here, address, whatever the case happens to be. Okay. Okay, let's add a let's add an address in there. Okay, and we can even add a um, an account num uh, name in there as well. Okay. All right, so if I, uh, if I go and refresh that now, so we can see that this is, uh, well, you can see the time it took there. Uh, it actually refreshed before I could even uh, hit refresh on my computer, so we're talking about half a second. Okay, so, so we typically tell people handful of seconds, but it's actually even, uh, even better than that. So uh, if I want to sync, uh, create a meeting against this uh, individual, I can schedule a meeting. Okay, and that will uh, immediately appear in my calendar. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, all right, so I've actually got a, a whole cluster of meetings there uh, because of uh, some testing I've been doing. Okay, so uh, what we can actually do there if we uh, now do a similar thing for create task. Okay, we can do that. We can set due dates. Okay, and if I go and synchronize that, similar sort of thing. Uh, if I go and enable uh, tasks on my uh, on my calendar, um, that'll actually get synchronized across. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. So um, let's talk about data coming in the other direction. Okay. So for our premium uh, premium subscribers, we provide uh, import wizards. Okay, so if we go into the import wizard here, okay, so let's say I am currently working uh, on selling a solution to Sugar CRM. Okay, so I can use the fact that Google automatically adds uh, all of my uh, contacts. Okay, uh, so anyone I email will automatically get added as a contact to uh, to my Google contacts. So uh, so let me um, let me jump into my personal contacts. Okay, all right. So if we jump over to the Google meeting, okay, go to import contacts. Okay, and let's say I want to. Have a look at everyone within Sugar CRM. So we can see that that has automatically found all of the relevant people within Sugar CRM. So let's say Heidi Hurst was someone I wanted to uh, start working with within the organisation. I can then enter her details. If I have her phone number, I can do that. Uh, and Heidi, uh, so I'm, I'm not that familiar with Heidi, but um, okay, I can go and import her. There, uh, as well as all of her colleagues there and then. So a nice convenient way to capture those contacts into our CRM. Okay, very useful if we wanted to, um, uh, if we want to start, and we'll, we'll then obviously see that uh, record directly within the uh, CRM. Okay, but very, very useful uh, if we want to uh, start using business card scanners and so on on our mobile and easily capture that information 
back into the CRM. So you can see Heidi's been brought into the CRM. Notes have been captured. She's linked to the associated company. Okay, and we can then start, you know, uh, using or, or tracking her within the CRM. Okay, uh, looking at the uh, the meetings. Okay, so similar sort of thing uh, with meetings and contacts. Let's say I've been out all week uh, as a sales rep, uh, and I now need to capture all the meeting notes back into the CRM. Okay, so we see we've got a range of meetings here. Okay. In fact, these are our three test meetings we created earlier. So we can filter to see the last seven days, 14 days, whatever the case happens to be. It'll automatically filter out meetings that don't have external contacts, because uh, as a general rule with a CRM, you want to um, capture those meetings that, um, that are client focused, okay? So what this is doing is this is suggesting a likely matching object, okay, in this case, John Smith. Uh, who is the contact that we created the meeting against, okay, um, or the related account, okay. I can alternatively uh, search for a, um, uh, a related object within the CRM um, if I want, okay. Um, now, I can set the status to held or not held. Uh, we don't allow the system to import planned meetings uh, simply because um, this is a tool for capturing meeting notes. So if I try and save that now, um, we can see that it's not going to allow me to save the meeting note. Uh, one of the biggest challenges uh, from a sales manager's point of view is getting sales reps to actually put in what happened in the meeting. Okay, um, so this is a way of enforcing that. So. Okay, so what we're going to do is we can now import that. Okay, if I go and have a look at John Smith um, within our CRM, we'll see that that meeting has now been imported uh, as a held meeting. Actually, because it started off as a meeting in the CRM, it's now been updated uh, as a held meeting, and we can see that we've got all of those uh, all of those notes in there. Okay. All right, so, so that gives you a, a good overview of the, the flexibility, power, and level of integration that we have within our Google Apps Connector for Sugar CRM. Uh, obviously, in addition to that, we have a diagnostic tool that allows us to uh, diagnose any issues, uh, but uh, as a general rule, it's designed to be very intuitive, very powerful, and very flexible. Thanks very much for your time.